So, moving on to systematic reviews and a bit of an introduction to systematic reviews. I'd just like to start where they all came from. Um, this gentleman here, the namesake for the, the Cochrane collaboration, uh, quite a while back, complained really, saying that it's surely a great criticism of our profession, and he was referring specifically to medical doctors in this case, and um, that we have not organised a critical summary by specialty or subspecialty updated periodically of all relevant randomised controlled trials. Essentially, he was saying, what we do in practice, we should be looking to the experimental evidence that will give us allow us to make a causal association to say, if we do this, we'll see this result in practice. Because the evidence was out there, but it just hadn't been organised so they could use it. Um, at this, and that's really what spawned this whole process of systematic reviews and this research undertaking that are systematic reviews. And since that time when they appeared in the literature, it's about 1990, um, they really have, those of you who are familiar with the content of, of uh, data, uh, bibli the bibliographic uh, citation database, such as Medline and the like, there's really been an exponential rise in the number of systematic reviews since about 1990 onwards. It is really important, I'm not going to go into too much detail today, but to appreciate that many of us are very familiar with the traditional literature reviews. A systematic review is a class or a brand of literature review, but it is quite different from a traditional literature review. I'm not going to go into any great detail, but I'm sure you'll come to realise that as I move through exactly what a systematic review is. So, here are two statements. What is a systematic review? an attempt to identify, appraise and synthesise all the empirical evidence that meets pre-specified eligibility criteria to answer a given research question. An attempt to sum up the best available research on a specific question. This is done by synthesising the results of several studies. There are some key points in both of these statements. An attempt to identify this is why the searching process is so important. An attempt to identify all the empirical evidence in relation to a particular question. Once it's identified, this other key feature of the systematic review, the appraise. We don't just take everything we find at face value. There needs to be a critical eye cast over the quality of that research and should it actually be used to inform practice or not. And then synthesise. Notice neither of these statements stop at a simple summary. There's a synthesis of the results of these individual studies, so that practice is based on more than one. And when we talk about synthesise, if we're talking about quantitative evidence, you will have heard of the term meta-analysis, the statistical combination of evidence. Similarly, when we talk about qualitative data that might be uh, derived from uh, a phenomenological study, where a researcher might interview or speak to a patient or a participant directly in the study, we can also synthesise that sort of evidence. And that's what we call a metasynthesis, where textual data is combined. But with this synthesis, what's coming out the end, and why this is such an important research process, certainly has the potential to be more than simply the sum of its parts. You've all clearly heard of the term systematic reviews. But it is really important to appreciate that everything that carries this title does not hold up to what a systematic review should be. Just as in the world of primary literature, we cast our eye to give a critical eye over the literature that exists. Similarly, this word is quite frankly bandied around quite loosely, even through the medical literature. You will see um, throughout what are called systematic reviews, quite stark variations in the conduct of this type of research. Um, some of that is driven by the different questions that are asked and the appropriate methodologies dependent on the different questions that are asked. We might have the Cochrane or the JBI type review of effectiveness, which is very clear internationally accepted methods and methodologies that are followed. Um, the questions, we talk about e uh, questions of etiology of disease or harmful outcomes of interventions that are used. Well, here we need different types of evidence. But then there are different methodologies for qualitative um, um, type reviews, or even there are new methodologies of systematic reviews that are appearing as well. For example, realist syntheses, some of which, not all of these different 
ways of doing reviews have been validated or in fact internationally accepted.